Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and the first story today, kind of esports news out there. I'm very excited to announce the most racist, violent, homophobic, and transphobic people to represent esports ever. That is Richard Lewis and Thorne. And today I'm going to break down just why they should never represent any esport out there, or at least some people might think that for some. Who wrote this article? Ah, her name was Hannah Dwan. Now, Hannah Dwan, I'm not really sure. It's actually a writer for PCGamesN.com. If you want to check them out, I'll link them down below. Again, I'm not going to try and drag any hate towards the writer of this article. I just want to break down the article. For those of you who have not read it so far, it is an article accusing Richard Lewis as well as Thorne and actually explaining why they should never be representing esports at all because it accuses Richard Lewis of being one of the more violent members out there in the esports community. And then it goes off on Thorne for a rampage of things. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are aware of the wide list of things that you know Thorne can say and attempts to not only be funny, but also to, you know, kind of jokingly poke at players now and again. So I'm going to read down the art, read the article for all of you guys, break down some points of it, and of course talk about Hannah Dwan, the writer of it. So first off, and again, I want to preface by saying I'm not supposed to be getting any hate towards her, and I don't want to, I, I think I, re I respect part of the article. I'm sure there's some truth behind it, but the way it was written definitely has a certain aspect to it, a certain tinge that I really just don't agree with. So uh, yeah, so first off, she's a writer for PCGamersN.com. It seems she wasn't posting very frequently until just recently, maybe she spent a long time gathering all the information on these two guys for this article, as well as other esports characters. But she did post a few days ago an article about this, and again, the full thing will be linked down below. So let's read it off for all of you guys as to why Richard Lewis and Thorne are two people we should never be listening to ever again. All right, so get ready for some big word usage here, guys. Now, first off, it starts off by saying esports has a problem with representation. Through partnerships, awards, and civil success, the platforms, companies, and organizations associated with esports are being represented by people whose histories include racist misogynist, homophobic, and or transphobic views, as well as those with violent or deceptive pasts. You only need to look with the, to the recent esports industry awards, one of the events with the largest profile in the business, to see examples of this. So you guys can clearly see she's pointing out definite, definite characteristics, first of which you see violent or deceptive pasts, that's all about Richard Lewis, and then racist, misogynistic, homophobic, and transphobic, that's directed more towards Thorne, and as well as other characters. But of course, I'm going to focus on Thorne and Richard Lewis, because those are my guys, those are your guys, in the CSGO community. So here's where it gets really good. You always have to do your research. If you guys do not know about Richard Lewis and his past with a Dota 2 player named Loda, it was back in DreamHack, I believe of 2015, where these two had an instance together. It was later cleared in defense of Richard Lewis that he was approached first by Loda, eventually putting him in a chokehold, and then it was it was cleared up after that. Nothing above that, and everyone kind of, of course, went off on Richard Lewis. He still has his haters out there like, you know, any good journalist should have. So, of course, they posted about this as well. So they say here, shortly after the award for Esports Journalist of the Year, Counter-Strike Global Offense it was awarded to the title of Esports Game of the Year. In Valve's place, the award was collected by Richard Lewis. He gave a great speech about this, guys. I watched it. He did really well, you know, word-wise. But then the article goes on. Lewis has been banned from the League of Legends subreddit, you know, not really relevant news, I guess, here, for sustained abusive behavior. Now, if you guys also know Richard Lewis, he's talked about this many times. Because he has so many haters out there, it's not, not that he's making abusive posts or, you know, bad behavior posts. It's simply because people just mass report the guy, and that's why he's been banned on their subreddit. If you know anything about subreddit, Reddit, it's not too hard to get banned uh, whatsoever, especially when you have a person like DreamHack or all these Dota 2 and uh, League of Legends players against you. You can get anyone banned on, on a Reddit forum. It does not take too much exposure to do so. Now, also on top of this, and banned from all DreamHack events, following claims he choked a player. Police were called to the scene, but Lewis was not charged. Key element there, guys. Lewis was not charged because he wasn't in the wrong. He has since taken a picture with a fan making fun of the incident and referenced it in his own acceptance speech, saying without CSGO, the only place he would be on TV was Crime Watch. You just can't make these kind of remarks without kind of backing. Of course, I know this on CSGO News. I've said some things ridiculously. I was on Richard Lewis's show for one of my biggest mistakes in my career, but if you guys actually watch, I guess I said career, my YouTube, it's not really a career, okay? Don't give me too much credit, but when you watch his speech, it said there in, in the actual paragraph that he referenced his past with Loda, the violent past in his speech, because uh, if you guys watch it, I'll play the clip for you right now. And uh, if it wasn't for Counter-Strike, I doubt it would have been on TV, apart from Crime Watch. Thanks a lot, guys.
He since remarked about this and said that was not about the Loda incident whatsoever. It's about his violent upbringing. If you guys come from a type of neighborhood that maybe Richard Lewis did with a rough upbringing, yeah, he made a, a kind of a funny, a very, very, you know, obvious joke there that if he weren't going to be an esports journalist, he might have ended up in jail or somewhere on TV or a cop show because he grew up in such a violent neighborhood. That was in no way a reference or making fun of that violent past. And even if it were, what kind of, you know, how do you place that that kind of reference to you not be able to represent esports? He's better. He's done one of the better journalists out there, especially for the CSGO scene, just because he had a past where someone instigated with him and he actually defended himself gives you no reasoning to call him a bad journalist where he should not represent esports at all. But now quickly, let's talk about the Thorne incident because this article goes off on Thorne like no other. Now, I really can't defend Thorne too much, although I will say he is crucial to the esports role, especially CSGO wise. Now, again, I understand a lot of you guys out there do not like Thorne. A lot of you guys do enjoy him. It's a really kind of a 50-50 split, but I think he has more fans than haters. And even at this point, you have to understand that haters are probably a good thing. You know, if you're not doing, if you're doing something right, you probably are going to have haters eventually. So let's read about this. In 2014, Thorne was fired from his job at ESL. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of this. Uh, the reference there was to underdeveloped countries, you know, to actually to follow up. Let's, let's place these out of context quotes here. He followed it up with saying those in Africa are left in the dirt whenever the developed world leaves the continent. The ESL official statement on the matter reads, ESL does not stand by or tolerate acts of racism, xenophobia, or other forms of discrimination and does not wish to be associated or employ those who make any such comments. Now, I will agree with this. And of course, he had his punishment, you know, ever since then, I think it was about a year and a half or even I think it was over two years, he was banned from ESL events. They eventually did reinvite him back. And I but I, you know, it's just like cheating in CSGO, you're going to face your, your punishment. And he paid that punishment, he waited the time until it was appropriate to come back. I don't blame ESL for that. I don't blame him for that. And of course, those comments were made on the on the air on live television or on live broadcast. So, you know, you never really know what's going to slip out. And that wasn't necessarily, in my own mind, a very, very poor, you know, very, very poor wording. Now, on top of this, the same year, he was fired from On Gamers for using the word um, retarded, the R word. Now, again, I don't defend him on this. Uh, in 2015, he posted a video on female representation in casting, where his argument for why there and still are fewer f female casters in esports was because female casters are not good enough. He argued that the debate of whether women should be casting on desk is now an area of general gender politics BS. He stated it is ridiculous to imagine women being inspired by women as an objective concept. And at this point in reading the article, I was at I was at no point surprised when I scrolled up to see who had written it, that it was a woman. Now, again, I have nothing against women in esports. I'm not going to say things along the lines that Thorin says. I do agree he's probably said some very controversial things about women in esports. And I think a lot of people have, of course, faced many of those kind of profiles in the past. We've seen the kind of streamers that, you know, many girls have become. And that does create kind of a precedence and it makes it harder for other women to enter the scene. I will say, though, one of my favorite casters of all time is a woman in CSGO. But I will agree with Thorne in the fact that I don't think there are as many uh, women casters in CSGO not only because they're not good enough, and that's certainly true, because they don't put as much effort as people like Pansy do. You have to put an immense amount of effort, and I think, of course, for a woman to come out in esports and put that kind of effort into a video game and casting a video game is unheard of. It's it's unfound, and people like Pansy are very rare because it's more of a stigma or a stereotype for a guy to be the nerd to play a video game and to cast over it or to watch other people play video games. And so I do agree with what he said, and I think it's taken it blatantly out of context for this article to talk about Thorn and in this manner. Now, I'm going to close it there about the article, guys. I hope you guys read it yourselves and tell me what you think about this. And of course, ever since then, to kind of reprove my point of how, how poorly written this article was, they posted an apology the next day, but they did not apologize to Thorne. They did apologize to Richard Lewis. I think they really should have taken him out of the article entirely as they did post. We have come to accept that there may be there was some ambiguity in the language we used and that the incidents we cited with regards to Mr. Lewis were not sufficient to constitute a violent past. There was also never any intention to label Mr. Lewis racist, misogynistic, homophobic, or transphobic. So with that being said, you might as well take Richard Lewis altogether out of your article. Just uh, throwing that out there. I just don't know what to think about the article. Please do me a favor and read the article down below. Leave a comment what you guys think about it. What's wrong with it? What's right about it? Did I actually take it out of context myself? Did I take a stance that maybe I shouldn't have? In defense of Richard Lewis and Thorne, I think esports and CSGO definitely need these guys. They are very knowledgeable. Although I will agree that with the past of Thorne, he has said some things maybe he, you know, out of context sound pretty bad. I really genuinely do not think Thorne is a racist or a homophobic or a transphobic or even a sexist. On top of this as well, I hate blanket statements. I do not think any one word or one saying or one out of context phrase
countries should label someone as a racist or a sexist or a homophobe. There is no, there's no, mean, there's no need for that. There's no actual evidence of this. And until they do it time and time and time again, I think people make mistakes. People say things out of context as well. And of course, people say things they don't mean. So on top of all this, please do me a favor, guys. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. Do you guys like Richard Lewis and Thorne? Leave a comment down below. But also, I actually was going to do a shorter episode of CSK News. I thought I would include that story first. I do have two extra stories for all of you guys today. The first of which is about the CSGO Lotto scandal. Now, for those of you who are not aware of the situation, uh, you know what? A lot of you guys are aware of this. We include Trevor Martin and Tom Cassell, of course, very popular YouTubers as well as streamers out there uh, across the Call of Duty scene is where they're mainly known from. And they were actually accused of, of course, owning part of a website known as CSGO Lotto and, of course, uh, publishing and advertising for it without knowledge or without actually, you know, making it public knowledge. They own the website itself. There was also a third member involved that was Josh OG and all three members have gotten off without any punishment whatsoever. This was actually first published back in September, but now the settlement has been finalized. So it is absolutely final, guys. These three members will be paying no fines, severing no time in jail, and again, having no, pretty much no punishment besides a stern warning from the Federal Trade Commission, otherwise known as the FTC. So for all of you guys who are expecting them to serve time, I think Josh OG was one of the members who was actually expected to have heavy fines and possibly face jail time. He is off Scott's free, along with Trevor Martin and Tom Gassell. They will not be facing any punishment thus far, but they will be warned in the future to never do it again. And if they actually do want to do it, they must publicly disclose that information. So yes, no, no punishment for stealing or possibly stealing millions of dollars. I, it just like Phantom Lord, Phantom Lord is going to get off as well. This is just absolutely shocks me to see that you know the government has really no regulation policies in place as of right now for this kind of misleading advertisement. And very lastly, today's longest episode of CSK News in a long time. I do want to talk about Drake Moon kind of uh, exuberating their power right now on many of their referral people. If you guys are not aware of many months ago, we had so many people uh, talking about and actually making these referral websites. One of my good friends, Zuri, had one of the most popular ones out there. He's ever since you know gone away with that kind of stuff and of course no longer gambling. I've had many people come to me though and apparently Drake Moon is exercising their power and actually banning and locking the referral accounts of all the people who are not sponsored with them officially. So if you're not actually making YouTube videos for them, but you're still referring people to their website through one of your websites or through other means of content, and like Zuri doesn't gamble anymore, but people still use the code Zuri on many of his websites, they will lock your referrals. So Zuri first told me about this. He's actually been blocked on many of their other websites, Green Hunt, Drake Wing. Of course, Drake Moon also owns Drake Wing. They'll actually lock your referrals. And for that time being, when they actually lock your referrals, of course, course you can't continue to get more referrals or earn money and that's their way of kind of exercising their power where if you don't actually promote them on YouTube you're not going to make money through referrals also one of my good friends CS underscore referral has several thousand followers visit his website for referral codes and apparently Drake Moon has locked his account after after actually referring thousands of thousands of people to the, to the website they just lock his account out of nowhere and why do they do this to save themselves money so I know there's kind of a scummy move out there by a gambling website known as Drake Moon so it's kind of bad to see but hopefully they fix that issue sometime soon with my encouragement. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's first story, I don't know how you guys are going to feel about me reacting and kind of defending Richard Lewis and Thorne. If you guys like that kind of stuff where I kind of review an article and actually talk in, in different ways. If you guys did enjoy that, please do me a favor, leave a like down below or more importantly, a comment as well. If I will see you guys all tomorrow with a My Thoughts Don't Matter episode number six. That's going to be a longer episode about Stannis Law and I'll see you guys on a couple days with more CSK News. So hope you guys all enjoyed. I'll see you all then. Remember, I like you. Goodbye.